This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm answering question number six from the January 2023 International A Level at Excel uh, Mechanics M1 paper. Now, this question here is about this boat, which is being pulled along a river at a constant speed by two ropes. The banks of the river are parallel, and the boat travels horizontally in a straight line parallel to the riverbank. So, what we're looking here is at, like a, a plan view. We're looking as if we're looking from directly above. Um, as if you know the, the drone footage from right above the barge, the barge, this boat sorry is moving along the the river, and you know we're looking from above, right? So there's no like weight acting downwards or anything like that. The weight would be acting straight into the page, so we don't have to consider that at all. That's, per that's perpendicular to this direction anyway. So the tension in the first rope is 500 newtons, acting at an angle of 40 degrees to the direction of motion, as shown in the figure three. And the tension in the second rope is P newtons acting at an angle of alpha degrees to the direction of motion, also shown in figure three. So acting one's acting like you know this way to the like you could say to the left, the other one to the right. Um, the resistance to motion of the boat as it moves through the water is a constant force of magnitude 900 newtons. So that will be acting in the opposite direction to the motion. Then it says the boat is modeled as a particle, the ropes are modeled as being light and lying in a horizontal plane. So light, we don't have to consider anything in terms of the weight or anything like that. And horizontal plane, so you know it's it's not like the ropes are not upwards or downwards, like you know in terms of if you looked from if you looked uh, from this angle from the side, they would be horizontal. Okay, they won't be sticking up or down. All right. Then it also says um, use the model to find the value of alpha and the value of p. All right. So what I've got here in the other page is I've got a scaled down version of this diagram. Now, the first thing that's really important for us to see, which I've already highlighted here, is the fact that it says constant speed. When you have a constant speed, then the resultant force is equal to zero. Okay, so when there's constant speed, the resultant force is equal to zero. So that's one thing that we have to realize. So the, you know, the constant speed might means acceleration is equal to zero. Okay, constant speed, no acceleration. So F equals MA. When you have F resultant force equals mass times acceleration, then acceleration is zero, so therefore the resultant force is going to be zero. Now, the tension in the first rope is 500 newtons at an angle of 40 degrees to the direction of motion, and as we mentioned, P acting at an angle of alpha. The resistance to the motion of the boat is 900 newtons as it moves through the water, so that's going to be acting in this direction. So there's going to be a 900 newtons force acting opposite to the direction of the motion. So what we can do is we can resolve these forces um, perpendicular, or you can say, um, you know, in the direction perpendicular to the riverbank and also parallel to the riverbank. That's what we can do here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to look at these forces and resolve them. I'll change the color and make it a bit thinner okay so i can take this force and resolve it in this direction and also in that direction i can do the same for the p newton's force i can resolve it in this direction and i can resolve it in this direction okay and that's what i'm going to do so for the 40 degrees force uh, sorry the, the the 500 newton's force if I want to resolve it in the direction which is in the direction of motion, it has to kind of go into the angle. So it's you can think of this as the adjacent side if we were thinking about a right angle triangle here. So this is going to be using cosine. So the, 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 the component of the force in this direction is 500 times cosine of 40. And in the direction we have to go, in this direction here, we have to go kind of like away from the angle. We have to resolve this force going away from the angle given. So this is going to be using sine. You can think about it as the opposite side perpendicular opposite side. So that's going to be 500 times the sine of 40 degrees. And similarly for the P, going this way it's into the angle, so this will be P times um, cosine of the angle alpha, which we don't know, and here will be P times the sine of alpha. So if we were resolving forces perpendicular to the bank, so in this direction here, we only have two forces to consider, and they're balanced out because it's going, it's moving along horizontally, and you know, it's not accelerating in that direction. So it's 500 times sine 40 is equal to P sine alpha. So that's one equation that we formed. And another equation we can form is from the 
um, direction of you know in the in the direction in which it is moving, which is this direction here. In this case, you have two forces acting in one direction and one in the opposite direction, which balance each other out. So we can say five hundred times. Si oh, sorry, cosine forty. So five hundred. 500 times the cosine of 40 plus P times the cosine of alpha is equal to 900. And that is the second equation, right? So remember, if it was um, something where it was accelerating, we would say 500 cosine 40 plus P cosine alpha minus 900 equals the mass times the acceleration, but we know that's zero, so we can just say that the force this way and that way are equal to each other. That's the reason. The only reason we can do that in this case is because we know it's going at constant speed. If it wasn't going at constant speed, then we'd have to use this forces this way minus the forces that way equals ma. But we know ma is zero, so we can do this. That's fine. Right now, how do I find alpha and p in this case? Now, a lot of students would get kind of stumped here because you've got sine alpha and cosine alpha, and we've got two unknowns. They'll try and think about you know, simultaneous equations, how we deal with this, okay? And they'll think of different ways of, of doing it, like, for example, multiplying both these top and bottom by sine alpha and cosine alpha or something. And it's going to become difficult, but it's really easy, actually. But we have to have some understanding of our trig identities. Now, one of the trig identities that we know is that the tangent of an angle is equal to the sine of that angle divided by the cosine of the angle. So if I take these two equations and I divide them, if I say divide, equation 1 divided by equation 2, then this left side of the equation will be 500 times the sine of 40 divided by 500 times the cosine of 40 plus... Um, ah, sorry, before I do that, my bad. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to actually rearrange equation 2. Okay, because I'm going to use this fact. So I'm going to, I want the sine alpha and the cosine alpha to be like the subjects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange equation one and I'm going to call, I'm going to write it as 500. So yeah, equation two, sorry. So our equation one, I'll rewrite it as P sine alpha equals 500 sine 40. And my equation two, I'll rewrite it as uh, P cosine alpha is equal to 900 minus 500 cosine 40. Now, these two equations, if I divide them, if I do equation 1 divided by equation 2, now I'll end up with P sine alpha over P cosine alpha equals 500 sine 40 divided by 900 minus 500 cosine 40. Now, the p's will cancel out. Sine of an angle divided by the cosine of an angle, as we said, is the tangent of that same angle. So you end up with tangent of the angle is equal to all of this. Okay, now I'm not going to write this as a decimal. I'll leave it like this and just put this in my calculator when I'm working out the angle. Um, I'm going to make sure that I'm in degree mode. So let me just write this down first. So I can say, therefore, alpha is equal to inverse tan of all of this. So I take my calculator. I ensure that is in degree mode, which it is. And although it doesn't mention you have to do in degrees, normally you just do you give your answer in degrees, especially in something like M1, unless otherwise stated. So here we're going to have inverse tan of this whole fraction. I'll write it until I get exact values or more accurate values. 500 times the sine of 40 divided by 900 minus 500 times the cosine of 40. And that gives me my angle, which is 31.868. So that's 31.868. So we can say, well, not that, that's tan of alpha. I should write this over here. Alpha equals 31.868. Okay, so therefore we can say that's, that's equal to 31. 9 degrees to 3 SF, or one decimal place, as angle should be given, unless otherwise stated, and I think there's nothing stated in how you're supposed to give them. All right, and then for part, um, that's part one, I think, was that part one? Yeah, that's part one, the value of alpha. 
And then we can find the value of P very easily. We can just use this equation. We know that the P times the sine of alpha is equal to 500 times sine of 40. This is probably the easier one to use. So we can then just say that therefore, P equals 500 times sine of 40 divided by the sine of our answer, 31.8868. Okay, so P is equal to, so we can just um, keep this calculator as it is. That's our last answer. So I can just put fraction 500 times the sine of 40 divided by the sine of my last answer, sine answer. And that will give us 608.736, 608.736. So therefore we can say it's equal to 609 to 3SF, 609 Newtons. Okay, that's P, 609 Newtons. So we have the angle and we have alpha and we have P. So we've answered this question. Actually, it's a very simple question. It just looks a bit different than what you're used to. You have to just imagine we're looking at this as a plan view. So you don't think about the weight, for example. Some people think, oh, what's the weight? Well, we don't need to know the weight because we're looking at a plan view of this thing and we're considering its motion, you know, in terms of being parallel to the riverbank. All right, so that concludes question number six from this M1 um, January 2023 paper. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. Other questions from this topic of, I guess this is to do with... Um, Forces, okay, and uh, resolving forces we found in this playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and um, you can use or look at this video here. It will tell you how to use my channel in order to um, find things easily that you might benefit from for your revision. Thank you for watching and see you soon.